the Rockets, Paul. The nah. Rockets just keep winning. That's all they do is win. Win basketball games. Jalen Green's shooting like 40% from three in this stretch. They're rolling right now. And they, they just they don't stop. It's, so, it's incredible. Back to 500. The Warriors lost again. So they're closer to potentially getting that 10th and final play-in tournament spot. And to what you said about Jalen Green, he's going to win Western Conference Player of the Week again, you would think. I mean, look what he's done over <laughs> the last couple of games. He's averaging 36 points a game since being Western Conference Player of the Week. He's 18 for his last 36 from outside, and he had 41 points. 41 points on 7 of 11 from outside against the Utah Jazz on Saturday. And again, you can put an asterisk by the Jazz who didn't have Laurie Markkinen, but it is really amazing that this stretch continues. You hope it keeps on keeping on. Is there a wall that's coming? There's a part of me that feels like, I mean, there's bound to be, but all of a sudden the Houston Rockets are watchable again, which is nice because there was a little stretch of this year where things were getting pretty ugly out there. Mm -hmm. And and they're playing collectively well, just just as a whole. I, the Rockets, what, Fred Van Fleet's playing great. He had, what, 10 threes, just 10 to 15. They just collectively have, have really turned a corner in a way that seems kind of shocking when you think about who's missing from this team. You're, you don't have Shingun. You don't have Tari Eason. You don't have Cam Whitmore. And they just keep playing better and better and better throughout this stretch. And yeah, I, I hear you. Like They're not playing the best competition. But at some point, if Jalen Green just keeps balling like this, then it's just it's what he is right now. And I don't really care who they're playing because he's doing it every single night. He's having a good performance. For the last month, though. Yes, for the last month. It's, it's, it is a short sample size. He is the sure. streakiest of streaky players in the NBA. The difference is he just also happens to have 99th percentile athleticism. Yes. And that changes things a little bit. I was very sur surprised to hear the Bill Simmons podcast, late Sunday posting, mm -hmm. lead off with the Houston I Rockets. I was listening to it on my way in. And there were no Boston Celtic references during that entire period that they discussed the Houston Rockets. Well, except there was the only the only one they mentioned was the one that we discussed that Sean brought up last week on the show. That when you look back to what the Celtics did when they really turned it around in Adoka's oh, yeah, first right. year versus when the Rockets did, like it's very on pace. I, for I was that. trying to give uh, Bill a pat on the back for well, not mentioning the Celtics for the first time ever, but now that you're right. I, it's a little different because Adoka, of course, used to coach the Celtics. That's why he gets a pass on this. One. Yeah, he gets a pass on this one moment. But it, it was it was surprising to listen to their podcast, and because I saw Rockets in the description, I was like, okay, let's see what they have to say. You know, sometimes they're not the biggest fan. Sometimes you'd even call Deservedly them. Deservedly so. That, they have not been. I, I mean, for me, I, I have not enjoyed watching them until this year. And I, I go, oh, they had James Harden. Oh, they were a game away from the, from the NBA Finals. Yeah, yeah, I like that they won, but I, I didn't like watching them play. Yeah, the style of basketball was not enjoyable. It was unmanly. Yeah, but the way me. the way they play now. Yeah. And talk about being manly. Oh, my God. They're getting in fights every game. Jabari Smith got suspended. Which is a garbage-ass suspension. <laughs> it really was because he did not strike first. No. He struck second. If you get punched in the face, you should be allowed to punch back. Especially if the person grabs your neck and then and then swings at you. Yeah. Because there were is... two strikes, so Jabari should get his one. It's not even like anyone connected either, which is always the most disappointing thing about NBA fights. Disappointing. I, I wonder how much of it is just say, like, hey, Rockets chill out like, I do. we we can't be having to review your tape of what happened in every rockets game all right like we it's been a it's been a rough and tumble last like three weeks of rockets basketball yeah just hey sit one down <laughs> shut up jock landale yeah. come on like, what, are you, what, what are you doing we're seeing dylan brooks every night we're seeing yeah. we're seeing amon thompson we're seeing jalen green against the suns this is good no i'm saying if you're the league they're like all right guys settle down a little bit oh. yeah <laughs> sean is sean is saying the league is soft gotcha. we can't have we, we can't have every night one team is fighting someone well like, the rockets are on television every time they play because there's a fight <laughs> like somewhere on scott van pelt good. every night it feels like is showing a scrap in the rockets game it's like Hey, look, look who's getting tangled up.
And the Knights, at least it's, it's a different player every night, too. It, it's so it's not like it's just Dylan Brooks. They're spreading the love. It's Cam Whitmore. It's it's Amen Thompson. It's Jalen Green. It's team. Jabar, it's team fights. Yeah. From from top of the roster to the bottom of the roster, no one Squabble. is above a, a good squad. We need Boban to get in the mix. That's what we need. <laughs> Dude, start, actually, start I, cracking I don't people's heads like coconuts. When do, when do I don't want the, him to have, get in the mix. I feel hey, like he'll kill someone. Hey, Jabari's suspended for a game. Well, they need some big he's, man. He's got an opportunity. They need some big man. How about how about Jock Landale? It's his night tonight against the Portland Trailblazers. That sounds state. good. Okay. He's Australian, and, and I mean, him telling Dylan Brooks the other night, like, hey, Dylan, we can't have you getting ejected. Shut up, who's, Doc. Who's sleeping on the air mattress? Who was that from the DeAndre Portland Aiden. DeAndre Ayton. That's who Jock Lawndale should fight tonight. Yeah. Just, that's that's your target. That's I your forgot. He's, Mark. <laughs> he's in Portland. Yeah. God, yeah, he's Portland in Portland. Stinks. They're yeah. So bad. Now, Paul, you're going to the game tonight. I am going. Yeah. What, what do They've you, earned my attention. They have. I was going to side. Uh, no, no. Oh. But I will go down on. I mean, I'm going to go on the court before and you know take some videos and post it to the gram to make it seem like I'm someone worth having. You mm. know, make it seem like I am a VIP. Then I'll go back to the press area and not say a word for two and a half hours, which is how it normally goes. But that, listen, I'm going to the game because. They have earned the respect of Mr. Bandwagon. Mr. Bandwagon, he, he's looking to put a seal of approval on the Houston Rockets. And if the Rockets can go back above 500, I will be there to put the stamp there. To Paul, say that I'm officially on the Rockets bandwagon until the end of the season when it's Boston Celtics time. And then I'm back in the Celtics bandwagon. But the, the Rockets might be in the playoffs. They for, might. For at least one day, you might, might have to be in. the playing game. <laughs> they might be in the play in. Okay, so it's not the playoffs? <laughs> it's not the playoffs. Uh, we made, we did, we made, Sean and I made a, a big mistake this weekend. What'd you do? Well, because listening for to that. the Bill Simmons podcast, I learned that at one point this weekend on Saturday, the Rockets were plus 800 to make the play in game. We, we should have jumped you, on that you one. You guys are such amateur gamblers. Yeah, well, well, Sean did. Sean told me my bet on the Rockets this weekend was bad. That is true, Mister Mister Rocket. Well, no, here. wait, but it hit right. It hit easily because <laughs> yeah. I took the over. And they scored what ninety points yeah, in the they first scored, half. Th- they scored forty eight in the first quarter. I was like, <laughs> okay, like after, we're we're feeling good here. Yeah, and after watching like fifteen hours of college basketball <laughs> every day this weekend, forty eight yeah. points in twelve minutes. You're like, oh my god. Now the Jazz had scored at one point twenty points. In the first quarter, when the Rockets have scored forty, so I was a little nervous. But the Rockets just all the, all they're given right now is reasons to be thankful, Paul. So, Paul, you, this is the the first time that you've enjoyed watching the Rockets ever. Yeah, I like the twenty eleven and twenty twelve teams. I liked the Rocket era teams of like finally moving on from Luis Scola. And then early 2012, before I understood what James Harden was, like the first year of James Harden, I, I didn't, I didn't hate yeah. it. It's mainly because of the emergence of Patrick Beverly. But Joe, the teams that I want to root for, I want them to win. But if they're not going to win the title every single year, I would like them to win in a way that makes me feel proud of them as somebody who lives in the same city as them. And that means being tough over being, I would say, like, showtime, Mm -hmm. showy, flashy. And this Rockets team, with yet another squab happening in the midst of the game, Jabari Smith Jr. getting suspended, there is a scrap to them that I enjoy significantly more than watching James Harden dishonor all Americans with his flopping BS and his theatrics to try and draw foul calls. Honestly, the best part of the last month since the All-Star break ended and the NBA put some rule changes in is that all of a sudden James Harden's not working anymore. Mm, You hate to see it. I love watching this version of Rockets basketball a lot more. Yes, even though the Rockets were a game away from making it to the finals where they probably would have won the finals back in 2018 against the Warriors. Yeah, 2018 is the, the, probably the, the last time I, I really, really enjoyed watching the Rockets on, on a night-in and night-out basis until this stretch. Because 2019 was was good, but not as enjoyable as 18. I did enjoy the Russell Westbrook era, like right before the bubble. So like that January 2020 
really when the Rockets started to figure it out, there was a short stretch there where it felt like everything with Russ and James was starting to come together. Russell Westbrook stopped just bricking threes constantly. I liked that moment, but I'm with you. This is the this is the most I've enjoyed Rockets basketball. And I think it's just because I didn't I I like you. I did not really enjoy James Harden. I, and and part of that's probably the ties to the city and and like the, the passion of the fan base at times with that we each have. I just don't I I could never get behind just dribble, 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 dribble shoot a bad shot. Or flop or flail your legs out violently to try to get a foul and not play any defense. I mean, this is perhaps stereotyping in the realm of sports, but I always feel like flashy and soft go hand in hand. Mm. Maybe the Warriors are the exception because they've got Draymond Green running around kicking people in the nads, but... Okay, he's like he's he's still soft. Draymond? Yeah. Draymond is is fake tough guy. I don't know. I mean, Draymond is actually bullying people out there and punching them. Now, no he one was. punches back because I think they know that they're going to get in trouble if they do. Yeah, I'm not. Draymond always screamed. Uh, like he he was he willing, is about that life though. I mean, no yeah. one no one punches back. Someone should punch back. Now, Draymond Draymond knows that he can he can toe the line and he's not going to get response. Now we'll see if that happens on April fourth. If he tries to squabble with Jabari Smith Jr. He says he doesn't pay the Rockets a, a, even a, a second of attention. Yeah. Bulletin board material. Is is there, he's probably still like, what, are, don't they stink? Isn't yeah, Steven yeah. Silas still their coach? Uh, I but he's new about media. Him. He's a podcaster. <laughs> I thought he was on top of the game. Uh, I wish I wish my bookie uh, had headlines for will there be oh, over under amount of technicals in uh, Rockets Warriors Ooh. on April 4th. <laughs> I think you guys said it two and a half. <laughs> Hmm. I'm gonna say one and a half. One and a half's the line. I bet that I bet that Dylan Brooks and Draymond will have something happen though, and that is pay per view. Yeah. So, so I, I, my thought behind two and a half was Draymond or Dylan are good for one themselves, one each, and then another, and one. then <laughs> one of them will get another one. Yeah. Or so, or Udoka will get one. Yeah. Or, yeah. So there's professional slapping competitions. Okay, that stuff is wild. It is wild. It is wild. What if? There was a professional sacking competition between Dylan Brooks and Draymond Green. Hmm. Last man standing. Like they just get to go, bow, right in the baby makers. And then the other guy, after he gets up, probably yeah. convulsing, the, never think, to have children again, pow, back yeah. in the other baby makers. And they go back and forth. Six seconds wins, on the clock. Toughest man in the NBA. <laughs> yeah, put the sex after you get hit, 60 seconds on the clock for you to get up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to to compose yourself that that has to be a thing and like I don't know that feels like a very like Wales yeah. or uh, like Scotland yeah. thing of like we just punch each other in the nuts see who pa- gets up pound for pound Brooks and Draymond Green have got to be two of the best nut punchers in the entire world uh, and Chris Paul that's probably your top three. Oh yeah Chris Paul that's probably your Chris top Paul's three a body right of work. There. honestly Chris Paul is number one <laughs> unimpeachable uh, body yeah, cause, of work cause, he, no, he's Draymond's been doing it since kicker. Wake Forest exactly yeah. Yeah, Draymond's more of a kicker we'll, we'll see Draymond's though a lot like Chris in MMA MMA on the way but, Dray- but see you you hate on Draymond because of his kicking well, Draymond's the MMA guy where Dylan's more of the boxer mm. it's different different so, uh, style two different yeah. styles right so I mean it, there's a reason that Draymond's won all those championships. And no, I'm not talking about being on the same team as Steph Curry. I'm talking about because teams are scared that they're going to get sacked. So they're always like a little on edge. But in this Rockets w- Warriors game, not too long away. What is it? Uh, nine, 10 days or so? Yeah, something like April that. April 4th. Yeah whatever, mm. yeah, whatever April 4th days away is. Yeah, I, I always get screwed up. The 31st of March messes with my math. It does. So, Sean, you, you are hmm? like the real resident Rockets fan here. Do you think it's a fair take that this is the most we've enjoyed Rockets basketball since, for me, 2018, for Paul, 2012? Since since Kevin Martin was on the team? Yeah. Kevin you're Martin the, was off the, the team. You're the only person off that's like, team. man, Kevin Martin. I was like, let's go. Off the team. No, he no, went no. way farther back. I, no, no when, Kevin, Kevin Martin got traded for James Harden. Yeah, I know. So it's, That's okay. what I mean. So when Martin was off the team. like I liked So it. you liked the first James Harden year? I liked 2011, the first year, where Parsons just comes out. Chandler Parsons comes out of nowhere, is randomly good. And then where Kyle Lowry was being a little baby and wasn't playing. And Kevin Martin was doing the same thing. 
Goran Dragic comes out of nowhere and Goran. randomly becomes my favorite rando uh, European basketball player. I really enjoyed that 11 team. And the 12 team I like too because, yeah, okay, they brought in Lynn and Oshik and Harden was in there for, at first. But Patrick Beverly emerged over the course of that year. And I really like Patrick Beverly. I think I think it is natural for a lot of people to like the kind of the come up teams more than the actual, especially when you're not like when you're the, the Wiley Coyote of the of of the NBA and the Warriors are the roadrunner like you enjoy I mean like no you expectations you you enjoy the eight seed Rockets in 2013 more than you like the 2018 Rockets like the, the best regular season Rockets team of all time like you I think it's a natural thing to like oh wow we're seeing the signs of Singoon and and Green coming together and all this stuff I Min Thompson more than you know if we fast forward in four years and they lose in the Western Conference Finals is like the farthest they get. Like that that is a natural thing to to uh to have. The resume was out with Harden in 18 though. I, I knew what Harden was. And 18 was not Harden's fault. I mean, Paul got hurt. It, mm-hmm. it, it was bad luck yeah. more than it was anything that the Rockets did in that series other than missing 27 threes in a row. But let's not talk about I mean, that. even with the 27 threes in a row, they lost by nine. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, it was a very close it was game. Still, it, was still pretty, it was still pretty close. They would I, kill March Madness. I, I just want the teams that I root for to be tough, and specifically the ones that are in the same city as me. And, I mean, that's what I loved about the Patriots growing up. That's what I loved about the Ubuntu Celtics, who only won the one title. Those two teams... Played in a way that even when they lost, you were like, well, I'm still proud of them. I'm still proud of them at the end of the day. And there were so many moments before that 2018 year with the Rockets that I still think of, like Harden not playing at the end of that Clippers series, uh, or excuse me, at the end of game six when they had the comeback. Um, the awful Spurs series yeah. in 2017 mm-hmm. where Harden's getting blocked by Manu Ginobili at the, like, at the buzzer. That was the first, like I would say, like, irredeemable sin of James Harden. It really like, was. Like the 25th or yeah, 2015 uh against the Clippers, it was like hey, <laughs> he was like he was ready to fire Kevin McHale and yes. so were the Rockets as evidenced by they only brought him back for six games the next year before firing him. <laughs> like that it seemed, it seemed like they're like, "Well, we got to bring back Kevin McHale. We made the Western yeah. Conference Finals." Um but yeah, the the resume on Harden, especially once you get to 2018, and, like, especially 2019. That, yeah. that one was terrible, oh too. Oh, boy. All right. The Rockets will play tonight. Try to get back uh, above 500 for the first time since... Since James Harden. Maybe fight some Blazers. Since, since the bubble. Can Steven Adams were they fight anybody fi- right now off they the They weren't 500 at some point this year. Yeah. Uh, they were over 500 for a good stretch. Yeah, they were. They were yeah, like they're the 13 year. and 19. Yeah, so they were 13 and 19 at one point. So okay. it's been a while. Okay. I, thought, I, I was thinking finish a year. Yeah. 500. First time above 500 since 20. 20- 20 in March. Can't lose this game. Can't, can't lose this can't game. Lo- this this oh, team, look, this team stinks. You got to win this one. Got to yeah. win this one. Even without Jabari, the, the Rockets are heavy favorites to win tonight's game.